Howdy, race fans. Welcome to my little show about racing I like to call In the Pits with me, Stock Car Scott. Here, each Wednesday on the YouTube, during the racing season, when I feel like it. Wow, I need to start off by doing a lot of catching up from last week as I wrote my script before checking the day's news last week. The big NASCAR news was the switch at season's end for the uh, Stuart Haas racing from Chevrolet to Ford. That's why I have all these Ford die casts around me tonight. I was shocked, but at least they aren't switching to the cars with the sign of the devil on the nose. Also, while checking around on Facebook for news, I learned of the passing of local late model racer Wes Rhodes. I had uh, read earlier about his accident and I had hoped for recovery, but unfortunately that was not to be. So we will be all missing seeing Wes pilot his number six late model on our favorite Washington racetracks around here. My condolences to his family and friends. Then also last week I read about Evergreen Speedway mini stock driver and an all around good guy Bobby DeYoung had suddenly passed. It, it, it just has not been a good week for our local racing community. My condolences also go out to the family and friends of, of Bobby, but life goes on and so does racing and and we all in the racing family know that's that's how it should be. Friday, Friday was better with uh, all three divisions of uh, NASCAR practice and then cup qualifying. The Toad won the pole uh, on the track but then lost it later in post qualifying inspection. His rear end was a bit askew there. Um, this uh, gave the pole to his brother Kurt. You know, how nice for one brother to do that for another. Uh, then I read the Toad uh, got uh, sent back to 39th, and I wondered who was behind him, but, but no one was. The cup field was only 39 cars. This gives us a little hint into why NASCAR has cut the field down to 40 cars from the old uh, 43 car fields that uh, used to be. Also Friday, I followed the adventures of several of my race fan friends on Facebook on their travels down to Kearns County, California for the Winter Showdown. That's Bakersville, folks. Thomas, Todd, Eric, uh, Mark, Kenny, Brian, Molly, Leanne, Mike, and Mayor, they all went down for the big super late model event to cheer on local favorites like uh, Garrett, uh, Garrett Archer, uh, Shane Mitchell, Donnie Wannett, Braden Havens, Tyler Tanner, and Parker Stevens. It looked like it was lots of fun, folks. Saturday, uh, Saturday I did not get up early enough to see either the Xfinity or Camping World uh, truck qualifying. Hey, that was early because it was Atlanta, you know, on the, on the East Coast there. But, and that, and I'm not a morning guy. Y'all, y'all know that by now. Uh, first up was, uh, for me anyway, was the Xfinity 250 at Atlanta. The Toad was on the pole for that with uh, Phenom Eric Jones on, the, on his outside there. But the Phenom jumped the start and was sent to the back by way of a drive through penalty. The Toad went on to stink up the show with a dominating number 18 Nas E8 ing JGR Camry. Kyle Larson almost uh, chased him down towards the end, but could not prevent a 77th uh, Xfinity Division win for the Toad. Phenom Eric Jones came back from jumping the start to be the highest finishing Xfinity regular in third place. The next Xfinity race is Saturday at Lost Wages. Okay, uh, let's see, the next next on uh, the same channel, 
last Saturday was the Camping World truck race, also there at Atlanta Speedway. Number 88, Matt Crafton, started on the pole uh, early, and uh, he was swapping the lead a lot with Christopher Bale. You probably remember him from, uh, from being the driver that flipped his truck at the end of the Daytona race there over and over and over and over and over anyway. Uh, the next restart after the second expiration of the caution causing clock led, a, uh, led up to a big crash up front that brought out a red flag with Matt Crafton and Daniel Suarez crashing out with a little help from Christopher Bale who had his problems a few laps later with a cut tire from the earlier incident. John Hunter Nemechek survived the late race carnage, or is that trucknage, uh, for his second sponsorless win in that number eight Silverado. Being a legacy family racing team, every win for the, the Nemco racing team and John Hunter, Hunter Nemechek is a feel-good win, folks. 2014 Summer Showdown winner uh, Cameron Haley was second in his number 13 uh, uh, cabinets by Haley Cam uh, uh, Tundra uh, for his uh, for a second place that was his best career camping world finish ever. Oh, while watching the uh, racing on Fox Sports One. I also followed along on Facebook with various racing friends that were attending the festivities in Bakersfield. It was interesting to see some of the crashes on and off the track. As I watched through the evening, I saw several of our Northwest favorites uh, make it into the uh, big show with Olympia's Parker Stevens, highest through qualifying and qualifying races at third in the final lineup for Sunday's winter showdown. Let me get me a quick drink here. Thank you, Sterling Glass. Okay. <clears throat> After racing uh, on Fox Sports 1 was over on Saturday, then came the 100,000 cameras on Daytona. It was amazing how many folks can't follow directions and hold their cameras correctly, their camera phones there. Ever so much of it was like that, and they told people, don't do it like that. Do it like this, you know. They even gave them directions, but, you know. But it is also comforting to see that uh, some of the same race day idiosyncrasies and rituals and other race fans uh, all around the globe, you know, like putting the cars around the TV and having the flags up and everything. Okay, so uh, Sunday, when Sunday came, Kurt Busch in the number 41 Monster Stuart Haas Racing Chevrolet led the 39 car field to the green. Then uh, for over 200 laps, almost two hours, folks, of back and forth racing action with Lots of lead changes and and Happy Harvick leading the most laps in that uh, Jimmy Johns Stuart Haas Racing Chevrolet. The field uh, raced through several green pit uh, cycles, and during the first cycle, Dale Jr. drove like a ticked off teenager to get up into the top ten from a starting place of like seventeenth. Uh, this allowed Junior later to be where he needed to be at the end of the 500-mile race. A caution at the end of the race, only the second, reset the field with the 48 out front for NASCAR's new overtime. Alongside of old six-time was Happy Harvick, my uh, younger brother's favorite driver, who spun his tires on the restart, slipping back to sixth while third place and fifth place, the Toad and Dale Jr. battled for second behind Jimmy Johnson, who was winning his 76th Cup race, which of course ties him on the all-time victory list with Dale Earnhardt Sr. Oh, 
And the, the battle for second was won by my favorite, Dale Jr., by just a little bit over the toad to help Jr. to ascend from his points disaster there at Daytona. Also helping themselves out of a, a points hole. My oldest brother's favorite driver, rookie in that number 24, Chase Elliott, finished in the top 10 in 8th place. So that helps him a lot. Uh, next, uh, this week, this coming weekend, is Sprint Cup at <clears throat> Las Vegas with uh, without that uh, downforce there, low downforce package, which means hopefully more fun. Also, Sunday was the big winter showdown at Kearns County, California, Bakersfield, but I didn't see it, nor did I follow it. Uh, but I did read later of our uh, one of our uh, two of our excuse me two of our favorite young drivers from up here in Washington uh, drive finished in the top five with Tyler Tanner finishing fourth. He's from Auburn and uh, uh, Parker Stevens from Olympia coming in second behind last year's winter and uh, winter and summer showdowns winner. Bubba Pollard of Georgia. So I'm guessing Bubba will return to this year's summer showdown in Evergreen to try again to take all the money back to Georgia. Whew. <sighs> but I tell you folks, we're just going to have to wait the uh, summer showdown to see if that's going to happen. And you know, this the season hadn't even started. It's still a month away. And I know I know that's what uh, all you folks are looking forward to, just like me. Looking forward to that opening night. Uh, I think it's 12's night at uh, Evergreen Speedway, the first weekend in April. And then the following weekend, Apple Cup at Yakadega. Then the season will really be in full swing. Huh. But only we still got to get through that uh, month until then. Uh, and, and you know I'm looking forward to telling you all about it here because, hey, I'm Stock Car Scott and this is In the Pits. So y'all can click on here uh, on YouTube next Wednesday and see another episode about racing that I made if I feel like it. Uh, thank you for watching and also check out the Water Boys uh, sports show tomorrow on Throwback Thursday. And before I... I uh, started the show. I did check with uh, westcoastlatemodels.org, and they still have six season passes left. So six lucky folks need to get on it right away and be able to see a whole bunch of really good racing at Yakima, Hermiston, and Evergreen Speedway this year. So plug in for them. I, I, I really like those folks, but tune in next week. I'll be right here, same stock car time, whenever, same stock car channel. Thanks for watching, folks.